morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I read to you from the 34th Division of Psalm, verses 1 through 3. Most Holy Father, we come to you just asking you to just be in our hearts, our soul, and our minds yes. today. Amen. Keep us on the straight and narrow road, Lord. Yes. We thank you. Thank we know you're a good God. Oh, yes, yes. All powerful, yes. all knowing, yes, yes. everywhere at the same time. Thank and we just thank you. Thank you. Thanking you for your word. Thanking you that you woke us up this morning, yes, started us yes, on our way. Yes, yes, Just thank you, Lord. Thank you. As we go through your word today, open all hearts and minds so that we can learn to be more than hearers, but doers also. Yes. Amen. 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 Starting a new unit today. Instructions to a troubled church. Our lesson is entitled Division in Corinth, coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 through 16. So we'll go around the room quickly so that we can try to expound on these scriptures. So we'll start out um, this morning with Sister Winston. If you could read verses 1 and 2 and have Christina read 3. Yes. All calls to be an apostle of Jesus Christ to the will of God. And so in the feast of our brothers, to the church of God, which is at the right, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, Called to be saints, with all that's in every place, call upon the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. Shall also confirm you into the end, 
that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, mm -hmm. by whom ye were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Amen. Amen. Deacon Prince, if you would read 11 through 13. Chloe. This I say that every one of you should say it. I am a part, and I am a powers. I am Cephas, and I am Christ. Come on. Go ahead with that. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? And Deacon Mike, would you finish 14, uh, 14, just I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptized in mine own name. And I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Besides, besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. Amen. Amen. The time is A.D. 55, and the place from Ephesus. I left with in three parts, gratitude for the church, grace in the church, harmony in the church. Today's aim to realize that all Christians are called to unity in Christ through the Holy Spirit. The principle to understand the biblical basis of Christian unity and application to strive for unity in Christ through the Holy Spirit with other true believers, no matter what their church disagreements might be. And I'll tell you something, there's always going to be some kind of disagreement. But how we handle it is what counts. Here in Corinth, we see Paul is on his second missionary journey. And he's writing to the church of Corinth. This is his letter to the Corinthians. And the Corinthians, when we talk about Corinth, they said it was a big place. I believe it was like a seaport. There was a lot of business going on. There was a lot of immorality. And within the church were both Jews and Gentiles. So right there, you can see that the setting was right for disagreements, divisions. Paul, he starts out in the very first verse introducing himself. He says, Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God, and that alone is identifying him of who he really is. He's an apostle. In today's world, we see that people call themselves to carry these titles. Mm -hmm. They make themselves apostles. They make themselves elders. They make themselves whatever they want to be 
title. But Paul is making it clear that he was called into this title by Jesus Christ himself. And when God calls you, he equips you. So Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God. And Sosthenes, Sosthenes, our brother. So we don't know if Sosthenes had anything to do with him writing this letter. If anybody curious about Sosthenes, you write down Acts chapter 18, and then you can read through and find out something about Sosthenes. When, as we studied this lesson, uh, there was a lot of questioning about Sosthenes. So that's why I really don't want to get into it. Mm -hmm. But uh, for those that want to know a little something about it, because it seems that he was uh, the chief ruler of the synagogue. And at one time, him and some of the Jews had gone against Paul to get him arrested. But here, Paul is introducing him as a brother, a brother in Christ. And sometimes we can have difficulty with people in our past, but through the Lord's working, he can bring us together. So he's acknowledging this Sosthenes as a brother in Christ. Also, um, right there, I, I looked up the cross reference for us. Uh, it's in 2 Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 1, verses 8 through 11. And, and if you look, when Paul wrote his letters, he usually started them all the same way, with a greeting, with saying exactly who he is, and also with encouragement and prayer. So verse 8 says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. So he's acknowledging that he's a prisoner of the Lord. He's a servant. He belongs to the Lord. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel, according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with an holy calling. When God calls us, it's a holy calling. It's not a calling by man. It's right, it's a holy calling. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose or power and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immorality to life through the gospel. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. So it was his calling from the Lord that equipped him to fill that role. He didn't call himself, and that's what he wanted them to know. Unto the church, verse 2, of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. 
And you know, sometimes we hear about people trying to find saints, trying to make people saints. But as we understand the scripture, once we are saved and God is working through us in the sanctification process, we become saints. And that's how he's addressing these Christians, these believers, as saints, okay, called to be saints. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And we know about grace. Here we're being gifted, their gift. And, I, and without grace, there is no peace. They're like, they go hand in hand through God's grace. So he says, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father. As he's doing his salutation, he's praying for these Christians. Verse 4 says, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ that in everything ye are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge he's thanking God for everything that God has given them when we speak about utterance we speak about speech language as we go through this journey and study and learn of his word, through the Holy Spirit, we are equipped to speak. Speak what? <coughs> the word of God. And he acknowledged all of that for them. He says, in all utterance and in all knowledge, not for us to become prideful mm -hmm. about it. See, because at the point that we think it's us that's doing all of this, that's when pride comes in. We have to acknowledge that without God, we can do nothing. That's right. He gives us this utterance. He gives us the knowledge to be able to read his word and understand and whoever has that ability, then we can help others. Because we talk about being gifted, but we all have gifts. And that's when we work together as one member, one union, then we use all of our gifts to help one another and to edify Christ. So then, when we can look at it like that, there's no reason for the envy and the jealousy. Because everything is to work together for the edification of God. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. And when we talk about confirmation, we're talking about that guarantee that comes from Christ. When he calls us, then we have to say, to God be the glory, because then the Holy Spirit is working through us to the will of God. Gratitude for the church. Paul, writing to the church, and expressing gratitude for them. <laughs> Any comments or questions on that very first part? Because when, when he's writing this letter, he's setting the stage for something else. Sister Winston. Truly, uh, we don't want to just go through this message, but we want to get what God is saying to us. And that's what Paul did. Put God first. And you notice that there's some fundamentals in here that we should be taking on. If we're taking on a job for God, 
we always going to start with prayer when he don't give us a journey or something to do. Because we said he is in first. He in it. And I like when I first heard this lesson because it says, and I like how they get the introduction. That's the danger in the church now, the separation. And you don't have to say a word, your body language show it. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, like I said, uh, uh, it, it, it's like if you don't want to do something, God ain't forcing you to do it. But he told us as a church, we're supposed to do things in unity. If you see, see me dropping something or uh, need help with something, he said, whatever you find your hands to do. I like how this lesson is coming just in time because there's a lot of people leaving church because of division. They see it. And the church going on with formality. But Paul didn't come here with formality. He came exactly what God told him to do. And that means that he went right what the words God used. I like how in this year, just that first part, uh, I was telling you, Christy, God sent different ones to do certain things. But you didn't see them come and say, well, uh, my title is so-and-so, so I got to do this. And now, uh, no, you know this, but... If he needed help, God sent him help. But you got to realize that God sent him help. People don't got so, they ain't thankful for the church they have. We used to say that if you see a piece of paper on the floor, you pick it up. That's, he just said, let's go back to God's grace. If it had not been for God, none of us could have did none of the things we do. This lesson is so decisive it's talking it's about God. unity. It's not about getting into who in the leader. It, it, God is in the leader. Yeah, you're supposed to respect leaders, but it's certain things you're going to see as we go through our Bible is that God will pick somebody that you don't expect. Who you don't think. He ain't tell us to come judging one another. Let the word do that. I like how he said, when you come into the house of the Lord, you should know that you ain't supposed to be talking all out loud, disrespecting one another. And, but if it is, he don't tell us how to help. We don't go back to the word. He said, come on, let's reason together. I, I just like that part because, like I said, it's because we don't forget who did it for us. Jesus died. We become a believer because of well, what he did. We got to realize that where the believers start, when they believe what Jesus did. He died and he rose up on, on the cross. And that's all about that. It's all started from him and it all ends and begins with him. So we can't start with him and just drop him and just do anything we want. Amen. Anyone that helps. Very good. Very good. Mm. Paul was addressing Christians, but they were carnal. They, and as we go through our second pattern, we'll see it. Grace in the church. So that he come behind. And actually, I'm going to. Go back to six and bring it in, because that's the part of seven. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that ye come behind in no gift. We got a guarantee. And and one great one of the greatest guarantees is ev everlasting life. Says so that he come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you unto the end. He guarantees us salvation until the very end. That he may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's all about God and his grace, his unmerited faith. And when, you know, when he puts his stamp of approval on us. It's just like when Jesus was out there calling his disciples and he said, follow me. They had to leave everything. 
but they had to trust him in order to follow. And what a journey that was. He prepared them to do the work that he couldn't do after he left here. Said, I'm going to prepare you to carry the word throughout all of the earth. We can do it too. A lot of us think we can, but that's because we're looking at self. We have to look at God, a God that can do anything but fail. When I was asked years ago to teach Sunday school, I was reluctant, like so many people are. When they call to do anything, especially things they have never done before. But it was God that worked in my life because that's what it was all about, doing his will. Starting out with the children, teaching Sunday school. And pretty soon, he elevated me to come before adults and teach his word. He opened up my understanding to his word. I can't take credit for any of it, because had it been up to me, I probably would have said no and been sitting warm in a bench somewhere. Okay? <laughs> but it's all about him. And once we realize that, then we can step forward. These Corinthians, they were Christians, but they lacked spirituality. And, and Paul, when he got knowledge of that, you know, I like the way he started out his letter. He started out in love. He let them know, I'm praying for you. He let them know, you are Christians. You're saved. And my prayers is that God will continually enrich you in everything that's needed. But he was getting them prepared for something else. You know, they, they were in a learning state. They have been exposed to a lot. And sometimes, even in this world today, we as Christians, we're exposed to everything mm -hmm. in our homes, in the street, the people we associate with, some of them our friends, family. And so knowing that, we have to make a decision. Do I want to have a relationship with Christ? Or is it more important for me to have a relationship with the world? We have to make a choice. Because the world is not going anywhere. And we're in it every single day. But we can't straddle the fence if we are truly set, a, set apart for him. And that's what sanctified means. Set apart. No better, but different for sure when you're following Christ. We did all those things that the world did when we were in the world. But it comes a time when we have to separate. When, when the people were being led through the wilderness and they were coming up on the promised land. And what did God say? Don't mingle. You're going into this land and everything is going to be there for you. But don't mingle with those people that are in there. Why? Because they're going to take your heart from me. You're going to follow them. 
you're going to worship idol gods. Don't let your daughters or your sons marry into them. All of these things were for their good. And so we have to understand when we stand for Christ and we say, I am in, in him and he is in me, that means something. grace in the church. There was grace in the church. Why? Because God is faithful by whom he were called unto the fellowship of his son. God, he's the one. He's faithful. And he calls all of us into a relationship with him. He is first in all things. Questions? Comments? When I looked at this, and I like how they put it in the expository, it said we do not have the ability to do God's will on our own. No, we don't. We need the Holy Spirit living in us. Yes. But I like how it came out when it said we would never be able to stand before God blameless on any merit we achieve. When I had read that, I said to him, I thank him, Lord, because he's saying that I don't care who he used, and he want to use you. He wants you to be that believer, not come stepping on what somebody else believes, but, mm -hmm. and he wants you to come at his level. When God said he going to use us, he gave us what we need, but he let us know. That's why my son died. When you look and listen to people, you start backing up. But when you start seeing in the word, letting that word get and grow in you, you know that you can't do no good thing without the Lord. Then therefore you won't condemn no one else because you ain't had he ain't put you in that place to condemn no one. He said, give me the word. So I like how he said, when you own it, when you face time and time again, you don't know, hear things. And you know, and you sign yourself failing against the word of God and what He done told you to do. You stay with Him, cause He the one got to change you. You got to grow in this thing, and you ain't gonna grow overnight. When you see somebody falling short, He told us to pray for one another. Oh, I'm not gonna pray for them. Oh, if you, if you, if the attitude and all that means a lot. But when someone come up and they trying to help you, you said either you can say to them, "Then I got it." Uh, and they don't know why I said, well, I want to help you, but you're not helping. You go to the first. But it gets so that we, the communication skills, we don't got so prideful. We say it any kind of way. We think because we got a little tight in our name. We don't walk up to someone and know it wasn't for the grace of God, you would be where you're at now. So we need a lot to realize that it's grace that brought us this far. Amen. And that's causing the division because we think we don't arrive. And then we start talking about people trying to be Jesus. Doing. You can get close to Jesus and do what Jesus do. Go ahead. I'm not in front of that. I'm, part, I'm working on me. So I'm, I look over there and I said, where it said that we love one another. If you know anything about love, you know that every time you, your child do something and cause you love it, sometimes you look, overlook some of the things that they do. If you don't hit everything, try to hold them down. But you try to encourage, that ain't the right way to go. And sometimes you say it wrong to a kid, they can kill them. So the first thing I, I really believe is, you keep on praying, you might not see it. But God has a time and a season to manifest that thing. So put it in his hand. Grace comes by Jesus Christ. The third part, harmony in the church. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Now that verse is powerful. When I looked, in the golden text, it puts it out there. It says, when Paul tells the church 
to speak the same thing. He instructs them to declare the word of God. Sometimes we're busy putting our own thoughts and opinions out there when we're speaking. But the only way we all can speak the same thing is to speak the word of God. Because his word never changes. Just speak the word. So many times people come to us, well, I'm going to tell you all this. Or well, so and so. No. Speak the word. I don't want to hear what other people think. Because God put everything in his word for us. If he say heaven is up there or heaven is on earth, whatever he says, that's what I want to hear. I don't want to hear what other people think. So we all need to learn as Christians to speak the same thing. I heard somebody saying that they went to the Catholic church where, the, where they wore black robes and they got up in the front and said something, but there was no Bible. So they, were they speaking the same thing? How could they? They weren't speaking from the Bible. That's why we as Christians should study to show ourselves approved have our Bible, answer the question, go to the pastor and ask them if you don't understand. But, but have knowledge for yourself, know for yourself the word, not to come without the word of God. Not to come without. And that's why I said, you know, God's children are gifted. And we all work together as one. And just like you said, you study. And if you don't understand, there's someone else that you can go to to help you to understand. We, that's how all of those different members work together. Later, in Paul's letter, he warns them not to think of men above that which is written. And we have the tendency to want to put people above others, above, even above Christ. We want to do the elevating. Oh, I have the best pastor in the world. Oh, they have the best choir over here at Calvary. And I don't know nothing about Calvary. I'm just using them as an example. But this is what people say. All right? Don't elevate. Christ is the head, not man. Right. We have to be careful. In here we see where they started following men, and that caused a division. Mm -hmm. Okay. It also says to elevate mere men beyond what the scripture advice, scriptures advise encourages false doctrine and promotes prideful and worldly wisdom. Finally, Paul tells them to have the same mind and the same judgment. He is not suggesting that the church has to agree on, its, on the essential thing, that Christ alone, uh, the church doesn't have to agree on everything. Because we'll never agree on everything. But when it comes to judgment, it's talking about making decisions. And we don't always get our way. But we have to learn to work together to come to a peaceful end. When you, when you disagree about things, it can cause a split in the church. We're talking about disunity. But the ultimate is when the church actually splits and one section is leaving, going this way. Somebody else is going that way. That's what, not what Christ is all about. So he is not suggesting that the church has to agree on everything. But they must agree on the essential thing, that Christ alone is the power and wisdom 
of God. These Jews, some of them didn't want to hear about Jesus Christ. And that's why they went up against Paul, wanted to have him thrown in jail. They didn't want to hear it. Their deep schisms would be healed if they fully trusted in Christ alone. And that's what we need to learn. Trust him. Trust in Christ alone. For the sake of unity, they should no longer aggressively compete over which human teacher they preferred, but about the humble mind of Christ himself. And that's uh, what was going on here in that third part. It says in verse 11, for it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there, excuse me, that there are contentions among you. So as I studied, it said, when he spoke of the house of Chloe, there was a particular group that was headed by Chloe. And they brought the word to him that there were contentions within the church. I like the way he came and he addressed where he got his information Amen. from. Amen. Because so many times yes. people bring things to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when you say, well, that needs to be addressed. Oh, no. I don't want to be a part of it. Well, if you don't want to be a part of it, why are you talking? You want to, you want to do all this talking but don't mention my name. But Paul let them know where he got his information from. Now this I say, that every one of you say, he's bringing out the issue now. Every one of you say, I am of Paul, and I of am, and I of Apollos, I of Cephas, which was Peter, and I of Christ. This caused a division. Some of them have been under certain ones that were teaching them, but you don't use that to try to put, to elevate you. And, and it caused a division. He asked them a question. Is Christ divided? Every question he asked them, nothing you could answer but no. 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 Is Christ Can't divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? <laughs> so no, don't elevate man. Because there's only one person, and that's Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. You know what I like about how Paul did this, or wrote this, is that he understood that he was the issue coming from the, the group or the person. And, and let them know that correction is needed. Yes. And he wasn't he wasn't putting them down. He wasn't hitting them with a hammer. But he was just letting them know, and generally, that this cannot continue. Right. This cannot go on like right. this. And I feel leaders need to have that same context when they're doing correction. It needs to be put right in front of the person or the group that is creating the issue. Not putting them down, not so don't make them so upset they need the church, but let them know it's a correct way to do things. Yes. And is. you have to do it in that order. If you're calling yourself a follower of Christ, you have to do it in the same order that has been presented in the Bible and the Word. Exactly. You know? He says in the 14th verse, I thank God that I baptized none of you. And he's not saying this in an arrogant right. way. But he's saying, in the last thing I would want is for you to be out there bragging yep. that, oh, I was baptized by Paul. Mm -hmm. You know, using it in a prideful way. Mm -hmm. And he's, because that's not what he wants. He says, I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Christmas and either Gaius or Gaius, whichever, 
great one say, lest any should say that I have baptized in my own name. Because he said, I can't baptize you in my own name. When you're baptized, you're baptized in the name of the Father, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's it. And I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. See, because Paul knew what his calling was. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't all about baptizing. Mm -hmm. He was called to preach yes. the word. Yes. So yes. he yes. wanted them to understand. Yes. He wrote this letter because of his concern mm -hmm. for the church. He had gotten word from Chloe. He introduced himself. He said who he was. He uh, made it known that he was called yeah. to be an apostle. He did not call himself. Yeah. He said, I didn't call myself. I was called yes. to be an apostle of uh -huh. Jesus Christ right. through the will of God. This Apollos, they said, was an eloquent speaker. Every one of them had their own characteristics. Mm -hmm. You know, but we have to be careful, very, very careful about things. God equips all of us mm -hmm. to do a job for him. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have uh, members that I know we came from a larger church, meaning a large uh, congregation. And if certain people weren't gonna preach, they probably wouldn't even show up. That's not. Mm -hmm. Same thing with uh, Sunday school. They find out who teaches Sunday school, they might not show up. Mm -hmm. and, and we have to be very careful because what we want to concentrate on, are they teaching the word of God? Mm -hmm. Are those words coming out of their mouth? Mm -hmm. See, because when I'm sitting out there listening, I don't want to hear nothing about what you think. I don't want to hear nothing about your opinion. I don't want to hear about what the other people think and this that's nonsense. Just tell me what's in this word. Mm -hmm. If you want to keep me in my seat, tell me about the word of God. All that other unnecessary talk, we don't need it. And that's what Paul says. Those type of things cause division. Uh -huh. They cause division. There were cliques in the church people grouping off together, not associated with other groups. All of this goes on, it especially. It's so few of us, but in the larger churches, it's more visible. Yeah. It's more visible. And he, this is a call to unity. That's, that's what Paul was saying. Don't start choosing this one and the other. Concentrate on the Word of God. Um, I wanted to share in our related scriptures, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And we've gone through these verses many times. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It starts out with spiritual gifts from the Holy Spirit. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that you were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking of the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, 
but the same spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given the Spirit the word of wisdom, and to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. So you see where I'm coming from. Gifts being given. To another, faith in the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these working that one and the self same Spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. Mm -hmm. All of these gifts are to work together as one. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Let's not cause division. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? Mm -hmm. If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? Man. But now have God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of thee. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable. Upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our com comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. You know, I think about a blind person. When they can't see, their other senses magnify. They can hear better. You think because they can't see you, they don't know. And you creeping around and they hear every step you make. <laughs> that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care, one for another. And we need God in our lives because that flesh does not want to show love. We want to pick and choose who we're going to love, who we're going to treat kindly, who we're going to speak to. That's, that's this flesh. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, and all the members rejoice with it. Mm -hmm. Stop sitting back saying, that should have been me. No, God got something for you to do. Just be willing to do it when he asks you. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, 
governments, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? No. No. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. With that, this is our first lesson in our first unit, Divisions in Corinth. And we're going to stay in Corinth for a while. First and second Corinthians. So let's stay on top of this. Let's study more. And let's be willing to learn and share together.